Today we find Mr. and Mrs. Lockhart in Paris, about to visit the Vagon Lee office. Mr. and Mrs. Lockhart are taking a tour through Europe. <laughs> that is, Mrs. Lockhart is taking Mr. Lockhart. Mr. Lockhart, as you probably know, represents the average type of businessman. Comfortable, blunt, knows his own mind, enjoys his business, and would much rather have gone fishing. Mrs. Lockhart is the pleasant type. A thorough housekeeper, belongs to the literary club and the woman's club of her town, and still retains the spirit of romance. Today, we find them in the Vagon Lee office in Paris, and Mrs. Lockhart has equipped herself with a three months course in French. Here's a taxi, dear. Well, where are we going now? Now, just leave it to me, dear. Well, can't I just ask you where we're going? Certainly, dear. I don't like being dragged around like this and not being told where you're taking me. Now, I'll tell you in a minute. Um, a taxi? Uh, oh, Vagon Lee. Oui, madame. Um, what did you say to him? I said to the wagon Lee. And what, may I ask, is the wagon Lee? Now, that's the ticket office where we're going to see about our trip. Couldn't you have told him in English? Now, certainly not. It seems to me you don't have to speak French over here to be understood. Oh, yes, you do. Well, all the signs are in English. I know, dear, but when you speak French, you might as well use it. And all the stores have people who speak English. I know, dear, but that's for the people who don't speak French. Well, it, it seems to me they'd rather speak to you in English than have you speak to them in French. Oh, don't be absurd, dear. Of course they wouldn't. I so suppose they don't understand you. Oh, but they do understand me. Speaking French is perfectly simple. Well, it doesn't sound simple. Now, that's because you haven't studied French. Taxi driver understood me when I said wagon lead, didn't he? Yes, he seemed to. Very well, then. Well, now, uh, how would you say Wagon Lee in English? Well, uh, well, well, it's the same thing, Wagon Lee. Oh, well, that explains that. But I'll bet you, you could get along just as well speaking English. <laughs> Ah, dear, this is the Wagon Lee office. Why, it's uh, spelt Wagon Litz. I know it's spelt Litz, but over here they pronounce it Lee. Oh, I begin to understand. You you never pronounce it the way it's spelt. Now, uh, let's find a nice-looking clerk. There's a nice-looking fellow over there. Oh, let's find a fat one. They're always more obliging. It's so much more interesting getting your own transportation than having it done for you. It will be more interesting if they sell us a ticket to the wrong place. And it brings you in touch with the native life, with the bourgeois, as they say. Do they? And besides, it helps me improve my French. Well, I didn't know it needed improving. And when you speak French, it's just nothing short of ridiculous not to use it. That French teacher back home would sure enjoy this. I mean, it's like your arm. If you don't use it, it stagnates. Well, same way with your French. If you don't practice it, it just lies dormant. It'll dorm, you know. Well, I didn't know well, that... Well, there's a nice clerk right there. Come on, Will. But, dear, now listen, I... Uh, si vous play, monsieur. Oui, madame. Uh, où ve, uh, vous êtes le wagon lead? Yes, madame. Where do you wish to go? Oh, don't trouble to speak English. I speak French myself. Pardon, madame. But, dear, he, he said he speaks English. Now, don't interrupt. Uh, un moment. Now, um, uh, Will, when he gives me the fares, you put them down in your little book, and afterwards we can reckon it all up. Uh, combien est le prix à Pardon, madame? Combien est le prix à 
Ah, à Biarritz, quelle classe, madame? Uh, pardon? Quelle classe? Oh, oh, yes, of course. Uh, what uh, class we want to travel, Will? Why, I, uh, uh, Of course, back home we travel first class, but over here, second is just as good. Uh, second class, s'il vous plaît. Second class, à Biarritz, c'est 287 francs, madame. Uh, pardon? Second class, à Biarritz, c'est 287 francs. Oh, oh, je vois. Why don't you ask him in English, dear? Please leave this to me. Uh, uh, voulez-vous uh, écrire ça pour moi? May we, madame? We may as well have it in his own figures, then they can't change their mind. Yes, and we'll know what it is. Voilà, madame. Merci. Oh, oh, 287 francs. Well, <laughs> see the funny way they make a seven, Will? Uh, they put it down and then they cross it out. And now we'll ask him for a timetable. Uh, name to know, monsieur. Uh, Désirez-vous un horaire, madame? Why, yes, uh, oui, uh, merci. Why, <laughs> he knows what you want before you ask him. They cut from, madame. Pardon? L'horaire n'est pas gratuit, madame. Le prix pour un horaire est cut from. Well, I never. Four francs for timetable, Will. Why, back home, the B&O will give you all you want for nothing. We won't take it. No. Non, merci. Je ne le prends pas. Comme vous voulez, madame. Oh, let's go, dear. No, we'll just ask him what time the train leaves. Oh, what's the use? Now, à quelle heure part in the train pour Biarritz? Il y a beaucoup de trains à Biarritz, à 8h, à midi, à 17h et à 23h. Uh, pardon? J'ai dit, il y a beaucoup de trains à Biarritz, à 8h, à midi, à 17h et 23h. Well, of course, that, that sounded like 23. It certainly did, and there's no such time. Oh, yes, there is, of course. 12 is noon, 18 is 6 p.m., and uh, 23 is uh, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 p.m. United States time. Oh, let's go to the hotel, Now, dear. I think we should leave in the morning and get to Biarritz for lunch. Um, maintenant, monsieur, nous désirons depart Paris le matin et arriver Biarritz pour déjeuner. Uh, je regrette infiniment, madame, mais je ne comprends pas ça. Nous désirons depart Paris le matin et arriver Biarritz pour déjeuner. Pour déjeuner? Ah, pour déjeuner. Well. Mais, mais, mais c'est impossible, madame, parce que d'ici à Biarritz, c'est un trajet de 9 heures. Oh, never. Never, madame. Oh, merci beaucoup. There you are, Will. Do you see how easy it is? The fare is 287 francs, and the train goes at 9 in the morning. No, madame, vous n'avez pas compris. Uh, you are mistaken. Vous êtes uh, en erreur. Oh, je suis, suis-je? Pardon, madame. I if you excuse, I, I will speak in English. I have said there is no train leaving at nine o'clock. But I distinctly heard you say nine. Yes, madame, I have said Well, now, look nine, here. I don't intend to be made a fool of in front of my husband. Let's go, dear. But, madame, I have said nine hours. Don't explain. I know you say nine hours in French when you really mean in good United States nine o'clock. No, madame, I have said it takes nine hours to go from here to be a race. Well, now, look here. I think you're just trying to make me appear so I don't understand you. Let's go, dear. And if you don't mind me saying so, I don't like your accent anyway. It's entirely different to anything I've been accustomed to. Alors, madame, je parle en français encore. J'ai dit, il y a beaucoup de trains d'ici à Biarritz à 8h, à midi, à 17h et à 23h. Il n'y a pas de train à 9h. D'ici à Biarritz, c'est un trajet de 9h. C'est tout, c'est tout, c'est tout. Well, well, I've never heard anything like that. Let's go, dear. All right. We'll just go over to the American Express, where you don't have to struggle to make yourself understood. And where they'll give you a timetable for nothing. Bonjour, monsieur. Good day, madame. Come along, Will.
why didn't you talk to that fellow in English? Why? Because I wanted to speak French. Well, so far as I can see, a little French is a dangerous thing. Well, I came to France to speak French, and I'm going to speak it. Well, that's all right, dear, as long as you stick to words you know, like demi tasse and au revoir. Now, don't you be sarcastic, Will. Well, I've made up my mind about one thing. Now, what's that? And just because you're in France, don't think you have to speak French, because all these people here speak English. Nevertheless, I shall continue to speak French. Oh. Will you call me a taxi, please? Now, now, there's a good French word, taxi. Hey, taxi? Well, where shall we go now? We're going to the couturier. To the where? To the couturier, the dressmakers. Not me. I'm going back to the hotel. I waited in that uh, couture place there for you three hours yesterday. Oh, very well, but I have to have a fitting. Well, you take the taxi and get your fitting, and I'm going to get a paper, and then I'll walk back to the hotel, and I'll meet you there for dinner. All right. Goodbye. Goodbye, dear. <laughs> uh. Well, here, boy. Got a New York Times? Yes, sir. How much is it? Two francs, please. Here you are. <laughs> Just what I said. A little French is a dangerous thing. <laughs> a little French is a dangerous thing. And so we shall have to leave the Lockharts until next week, when we join them as they visit the historical places of Paris.